Welcome everyone, this is Michael Forrester with CodeCloud. This is the 2024 June edition of Keeping Up With AWS. This month in June, we're going to be focusing primarily on features and releases that have been happening around AWS, particularly around, related around DevOps as usual. But we are going to talk about some integrations and some repos as well, just to give you some useful information that you can action on. Just to give you a highlight, we're going to talk a bit about the two new features for Amazon Q for developers, which I want you to think of this as an AI agent for your command line and your integrated development environments. We're also going to talk about an EC2 finder tool that's going to allow you to identify the perfect virtual machine for your EC2 workloads. We're going to talk a little bit about security features for the Elastic Container Service. And my last two and probably my favorite, we're going to talk about Amazon Bedrock's integration with Slack so that you can talk directly to LLMs. And we're going to talk about five ways you can improve your CloudFormation workflow using Amazon Q for developers that's using AI. That's what we're going to focus on today. As always, thank you for being here. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and let us know in the comments what you want us to focus on. Otherwise, let's dive into what's going on for June. Okay, here we are diving in, keeping up with AWS June. All right, so let's talk about number one. Number one is one of the two feature releases for the Amazon Q for developer offering. This one allows for CLI or command line completion with Amazon Q. Now, as of July, it's actually only for Mac OS, so it's not for everyone just yet, but it allows you to basically anticipate common commands that you run and it will auto-complete them. So in the example given, if you type in git and you commonly uh, type in git push origin main, it will actually allow you to tab and just complete the most common command that you submit. It's only for Mac OS right now, so just so you're forewarned, but it is a preview of what's coming for Amazon Q around the command line. That's number one. Number two, we're gonna have an EC2 instance type finder, which allows you to find your EC2 instance workload. Now here's the weird part about number two, is that it's gonna allow you to use machine learning to match your workload with the type of EC2 instance that you might need. Now there's hundreds of EC2 instances, so figuring that out can be kind of tricky, but this is buried inside the console, so we're actually gonna take a look at this one. And so basically it says it's available inside the console. So we're gonna to go to the console. Now I'm in Ohio. This is actually me logged into my AWS account. I'm gonna click on EC2 and we're gonna go straight to the EC2 dashboard. If I click on launch instance, it's gonna ask me my name and all this other stuff. And I know we don't normally do this. We usually use Terraform or something along those lines. But if you happen to be doing it this way, here's where you find it. If you scroll down under instance type, you'll see right here this small section that says get advice. It's buried inside of this little link because if you click on get advice, it pops up this little window. And you can say I'm hosting, for example, let's say a Kubernetes set of systems. We're doing application hosting and I want the, the lowest cost possible and I don't really care about CPU. You know what? I changed my mind. I do care about CPU. I want to use uh, Intel because maybe I'm attached to the AMD 64 base or whatever. So I could use either actually. Uh, notice here that the, these are the only the options. So I'm going to stick with Intel just for the time being. So I'm going to get the instance and notice it's now recommending the M7i Flex, the T3, the M6in, the C6in, the M6id, etc. Right? If I try it again and let's say I'm actually okay with an ARM based processor, let's do Gravitron, notice it's going to recommend different types. If I go back and say, you know what, instead of doing Docker and Kubernetes, what if I actually want to do a little data warehousing? Let's see if I, data science and analytics maybe, and I actually want the highest performance and I don't really have a preference, what's it going to tell me? Notice here it's using the I4s, the R's, the IM4s, the IS4s. So this is using machine learning to kind of adapt the type of workload to the instance that's available on EC2. Again, a reminder, this is buried under that get advice link that we were just talking about right here. Get advice. It's not well known. I think most people would kind of skip over that. So I just wanted you to see it. Going to number three. Three is just a feature. ECS, the Elastic Container Service, is one of the best ways to get in to containers if you don't want the learning curve of Kubernetes if you're on AWS already. Now, Kubernetes is going to have enhancements, engagement, you know, CNCF distribution. It's going to have all these other kind of features. You can extend it really nicely. 
but ECS is a great way to get started with containers if you don't want to do that. Now, ECS has always supported ephemeral encryption, but it doesn't, it hasn't supported ephemeral encryption for disks with customer managed keys. And so this is now a feature that's been added as of June. The ECS and the Fargate launch type both now support customer managed keys to encrypt their ephemeral storage. So it's pretty nice. Again, a, a security or feature enhancement. That's number three. Number four, maybe you've used Code Catalyst, right? And when you use Code Catalyst, it basically allows you to kind of orchestrate the software development lifecycle and issues like tickets, tasks, stories, epics, that kind of thing around the building of your code. Well, now Code Catalyst now supports the use of some enterprise level source code repositories, such as GitHub Cloud and Bitbucket Cloud, so that you can read those repos and kind of derive and generate your tasks using Amazon Q for developers. If you haven't touched Code Cloud, this is definitely worth, sorry, Code Catalyst, not Code Cloud, I'm Code Cloud. You definitely want to check this out, right? Because it'll allow you to basically go to merge ready code in a single pull request. It'll help you, you know, set up and manage the issues. Amazon Q will work with Code Catalyst to analyze the source repo and figure out how to create a plan, generate source code, all that stuff. So if you haven't seen Code Catalyst and you haven't seen Amazon Q for developer working with Code Catalyst, I would maybe try a little POC here because it's actually worth exploring. Number five, the relational database service, which is kind of the transactional database service of AWS, has always, well, always, for almost a decade now, has supported something called multi-AZ. And there's been one flavor of it up until the last two years. And the only flavor that was available is that you had a primary database instance, and that was a read writer instance, and you had a backup instance that you couldn't touch for anything. You couldn't read against it, you couldn't do anything, and you had asynchronous re replication going on between the two instances. The reason you would do this is that one lived in one data center and another lived in another data center called availability zones. Now, RDS about two years ago introduced this idea of cluster deployments where you have a primary read-write database and you've got two read copies that are both asynchronously replicating with the primary and you can actually read data off of those other two instances and they're multi-AZ, meaning they are spread across multiple data centers slash availability zones. And that's really nice. But the cluster version of the RDS has never supported S3 exportation, which would then allow you to reuse that data into other contexts, including pre-production, etc. Now, there were ways around that, but you couldn't just export it just out to plain S3 buckets. Now, as a feature enhancement, cluster deployment of multi-AZ now supports exportation into S3. So it goes out in a parquet format so you can read it and import it to another system, right? And so, again, another kind of feature enhancement. That's number five. Number six, the second of the Amazon Q developer releases now states that it's now basically general availability for Visual Studio IDE and for, you know, VS Code. Now you might say, well, what is Amazon Q for developer? Like, what does that do? Think of it as GitHub Copilot. Think of it as Gemini for developers, Google's Gemini, right? It basically allows you to uh, explain code, examine code, generate code. Think of it as your AI assistant for code. This is now GA. Check it out. Number seven, and one of my favorite, is that there's now five ways that Amazon Q for Developer can now improve your CloudFormation development. And so there's a great little blog post that basically talks about five ways to simplify. And here's number one. So number one is you can use it to generate code itself, just like we would use any Gen AI application. Two, you can get it to understand CloudFormation resource properties. This is the meat and potatoes of CloudFormation templates because resources as defined inside the template are what gets created inside of your AWS account. So EC2 instances, VPCs, S3 buckets, RDS databases, all of it. Those are resources. And so knowing the properties of these resources allows you to find exactly what kind of service attributes that you want to put on them. So what kind of EC2 instance, what kind of database, what characteristics, that can be something that's difficult to understand. And so Amazon Q can help you fix that workflow or understand it. Number three is that you could explain existing template code, extremely useful. Number four is that you could troubleshoot deployment issues. How many times have you watched a CloudFormation template fail and then roll back? How do you troubleshoot that? It can be very helpful for that. And last but not least is the ability to query CloudFormation documentation of functionality without having to actually go into the documentation. Amazon Q for developer can help with that workflow. Check it out, little tutorial blog. It is relatively hands-on, so you can actually walk through each of the steps as they're suggested. 
And that's number seven. Number eight, last but not least, is that this is a link to a repository that basically is going to allow you to link Amazon Bedrock, which allows you to host generative AI models. And it's gonna allow you to integrate those models into Slack so that you can just directly message the model with a natural language and get a response back. Amazon Bedrock, by the way, will host models that let you expect things like, you know, Claw 3.5 or Llama 3 or Mistral or whatever else is available, right? As of July, 2024, Bedrock keeps up with hosting those models and now you can integrate that hosting in with Slack. Very useful. And that is number eight. Hopefully you've had that useful. Here we are we're going through our eight recommendations of DevOpsy tidbits for AWS. Again, my name is Michael Forrester. Catch me in comments, hit subscribe, hit that like button, and we will see you at the next Amazon Tidbits, keeping up with AWS. Thank you.